Hey. Hello, hello English readers. Welcome to the live read along of the graded reader adaptation of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I'm a little bit late today. I'm sorry. I was actually uh, having a session with my book club that I host on person, in person, sorry, uh, in a town near Bordeaux, uh, in a little town uh, where um, uh, very close to where I live. So it's very convenient. And this way we can meet with the uh, in person with the people um, in the area. So if you live near Bordeaux, please join us um, and message me on uh, Instagram or uh, send me an email if you'd like to join the book club um, in person. So um, just to introduce myself, hi Katie, thank you for joining. Sorry I'm late today. Um, so I'm Lydie Buron, I'm an English teacher in France and I am the founder of Lydie's Book Club in which I host live readings of adaptations of classics of English literature or also uh, contemporary novels. I tend to prioritize books that are written by women and once a month, uh, once a week, sorry. I host um, lives um, on a live on YouTube on Zoom, sorry, uh, with the members of the book club to discuss the chapters read over the week. We also talk about books in general and learning English. Um, so this month we are having um I uh, started a new uh an addition to uh the 12 live reading session that I host live on Instagram. Uh, and then accessible on Lydia's Book Club channel. I uh, will start host. I I will host three live workshops uh, on three Saturdays. You can find all the dates in the description. And that's something new compared to all the other live reading uh, that I've done uh, before. And the first session is this Saturday. And it will be held uh, on uh, Zoom and at 9 a.m. Um, Central European time. And uh, we will discuss uh, the chapters uh, one to five. So the chapters that we read this week. And today we are reading chapter five. And to have access to this live workshop, you uh, have to become a member of the book club. So make sure you subscribe now um, in the link in the description uh, of this video and uh, be part of the book club and this literary journey and improve, practice your English through the discussions of books, share your thoughts uh, and um, yeah, and meet new people. So today we're going to read chapter five together. And um, if you'd like to know more about J, um, Charlotte Bronte's work and life and get uh, to know more about this novel, Jane Eyre, then I invite you to listen to the podcast episode 20, an introduction to uh, Charlotte Bronte and Jane Eyre. It's available on YouTube or Spotify. You choose the way you want to uh, listen to it. So without further ado, as once as uh, we say, uh, I'm going to do a quick recap of chapter four, the one that we read yesterday. Um, so where were we? Mr. Rochester comes home. So this in this chapter, um, three months has passed and uh, Jane, Jane Eyre, the main character in this story, hi guys, thank you for joining, um, is finally back at, the, at uh, Thornfield Hall. Um, but we meet him um, in a very... In a particular way, 
Um, so Jane Eyre meets him for the first time on the road. So he is on his way to Thornfield Hall, but um, he fell with his horse and um, or something happened with the carriage. Uh, yeah, yeah. A few minutes, and there was a sound in horse feet. Oh, uh, the the horse, uh, got hurt. Yeah, the the horse feet, um, uh, fell on ice on the ice, and then um, Mister Rochester fell from his horse, so um, he was badly injured. Uh, on his, uh, in his ankle, and Jane was. On her way, she was walking, uh, and she was on her way to post a letter, and to the nearest village. I remember the name. What was the name of the village? Anyway, she was on her way to post a letter for Mrs. Fairfax, and um, the housekeeper. Mrs. Fairfax is the housekeeper of the house, and she um is she was. Uh, on her way to post the letter and she came across Mr. Rochester but she did but at the time she doesn't know it's him and uh, she goes to towards him to try to help him and try to rescue him and um, he's going to put his arm on his shoulder like you see in this lovely illustration of um, the book and uh, of this scene in the book and um, then Mr. Rochester is going to start asking her questions about um, her uh, where she's from etc and she is going to tell him that well she works uh, she she works as uh, a governess as the new governess in thornfield hall and um and learning that mr rochester is going to ask oh well uh do you know mr rochester and uh, she uh pretending that it's not him so he's going to keep um, secret. He's going to keep his identity secret. So um, to just to, uh, in a way, to test her or to, to see what she's going to say about him. And, um, and obviously Jane is going to say that she doesn't know him and um, that uh, she, um, she had never seen him. And the, the, yeah, the village was called Hay. And um, and the encounter is going to end this way. That's it. And he's going to say, thank you for um, helping me. And then off he goes. And, uh, and Jane then goes home. She comes back home, well, go, comes back to Thornfield Hall. And there she sees a dog, because I forgot to mention that Pilot is, that um, Mr. Rochester is accompanied uh, by his dog, Pilot, when he was uh, on his way uh, back to Thornfield Hall, when he was on the road. And, well, Jane sees the same dog in the house and then she uh, speaks to Leah, a servant, and she learns that uh, it's, it is Mr. Rochester's dog and then uh, learns that he just arrived and then she understands that it is and she learns as well that uh, he fell uh, from his horse and he was badly hurt so all the pieces get back together and she works out that uh, 
she had met Mr. Rochester. So she goes upstairs and quickly get uh, ready um, and uh, to, to come down. So we ended the chapter like that, well, with this. And uh, now let's see what is going to be their first conversation. What are they going to say to each other? Okay. A fire in the night. It was difficult to teach Adele the next day. She was excited because Mr. Rochester was home. Um, so Adele is um, the girl, is a little girl that Mr. Rochester is, um, is the guardian of. So she is called a ward. Uh, and... Um, it's a child that um, Mr. That um, someone the word ward, were um, ward is um, means that uh, it's a child that someone is responsible for. So she is in the care of Mr. Rochester, and she comes from France. She was born in France, and now she is being raised in England, and at Thornfield Hall. And she's accompanied by a nurse, a French nurse. And she talks quite a lot in French. She doesn't know much English. So, um, so that's why there is um, sometimes a couple of sentences or words in French in the novel. Um, here, not, yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay, let's continue. She was excited because Mr. Rochester was home and she kept running to the library door to look for him. When it got dark, I let Adele put away her school books and run downstairs to play. Then I walked to the window and I was watching the snow when Mrs. Fairfax came in. Mr. Rochester would like you and Adele to have tea with him this evening, she said. I went to my room and put on my best black dress. Then I went back downstairs and followed Mrs. Fairfax into the drawing room. So tea is um, the equivalent of dinner. Yeah, to have tea is having the evening meal in England. <laughs> Hi, Alice. I'm good. Thank you. Um... Okay. Two candles stood on the table. Mr. Rochester was sitting on the couch in front of a huge fire with Pilot at his feet. Adele sat on the floor next to the dog. Mr. Rochester did not lift his head when he entered when when we entered. Miss Eyre, um Miss Hare is here. Miss Eyre is here, sir, said Mrs. Fairfax in her quiet way. He nodded his head. Please sit, Miss, F Miss Eyre. I did not mind that he was not polite. I liked it, actually. I sat down and waited for him to speak again, while Mrs. Fairfax brought us both some tea. Then she sat in the corner. Did you, did you expect a present, Miss Eyre? Um, did you expect a present, Miss Hare? Mr. Rochester asked suddenly. He turned and looked to me hmm. so you can see them here sitting on the table uh, sitting at the table so mr Fe mr rochester um lying on uh the couch and jane here in front of him and mrs fairfax knitting at the back I don't know, sir, I replied. I have not received many presents in my life. I know that people think they're nice. They are nice things. People think, he said. But what do you think? Adele wants a present as soon as she sees me. But you have not asked for one. Because I do not expect one, sir, I said. Adele knows, Adele knows you and it is normal for you to bring her a present. 
you do not know me and you have no reasons, no reason to give me one. Please don't be, modi uh, don't be modest, he said. I have spoken to Adele and she has learned a lot since you came. Then that is my present, I replied. Teachers like teachers like to hear that their students are doing well. It's quite interesting to it's quite strange to see that um her uh, her employer, her master, he is asking her if she would like a present, don't you think? It feels a little bit unusual for a master to um to wonder whether her employee would like to um would expect a present for him from from him um so i guess if you were a servant yourself maybe you were uh you would react in the same way as jane yeah it's a little bit out of quite unexpected for a master to ask such a question. Hmm. Hmm, he said. You have lived in my house for three months, haven't you? Yes, sir, I replied. Where did you come from? Lowood Institution, sir. Ah, oh, that explains your strange pale face and modest words. Where are your parents? I don't have any, sir. Brothers? Sisters? I have no brothers or sisters, I replied. How did you come to work here? I advertised and Mrs. Fairfax wrote to me, I said. At that moment, Mrs. Fairfax decided to speak. And it was a good thing too, Miss Eyre. Um, it was a good thing too. Miss Eyre, Miss Eyre has been a good friend to me and a kind and careful teacher to Adele. Please don't feel you have to say good things about her. I shall decide, replied Mr. Rochester quickly. My horse fell because of her, and now my foot is hurt. Hmm. He asked me more about my years at Lowood, and I told him about Mr. Brocklehurst and the cold rooms and the terrible food. Then he, dis he suddenly said, Look at the time, Miss Eyre. It's past nine o'clock. Adele should be in bed. I feel that Mr. Rochester is very strange, I said to Mrs. Fairfax. Later, when I joined her in her room, later when I joined her in her room, one moment he is happy and the next he is angry and he is not very polite. Maybe he seems strange to someone who does not know him, she replied slowly. But... If he is strange, three reasons for it. There, there are reasons for it. Sorry. There has been bad trouble in his, in his family. His older brother, who lived here before, died nine years ago. Mr. Rochester has only lived at Thornfield Hall since then. Was he very sad when his brother died? I asked. I don't think so, she replied. Their father did not want to share his money between his sons, so he gave it all to his older son. He wanted Mr. Rochester to have money too, but the plans he made for Mr. Rochester were bad. There was a lot of trouble. I don't know what happened, but Mr. Rochester stopped talking to his family. And now he lives a very strange life. He is never at Thornfield Hall at Thornfield for more than a fortnight, but it's not a surprise that he does not like the place. Why does he like it? Why doesn't he like it? I asked. Maybe he thinks that it's a dark and unhappy place. It was not an answer. I wanted to know more, but Mrs. Fairfax either could not or would not give me any more information. Oh, sorry, I need this. Other. Okay. Some days later, Mr. Rochester asked me and Adele to join him again. 
This time, he was smiling and there was a bright light dancing in his eyes. You're looking at me, Jane Eyre. Do you think that I'm handsome? He said. I did not think before I answered. No, sir. <laughs> She's quite rude to say that he's not a handsome. Handsome means beautiful for people um, or men in general. Um, well, she's handsome, yeah, and women, for, for people. Um, yeah, he laughed loudly. You're very different from other people, he said. You sit there quietly with your hands together, but when you answer, you say what you think. Hmm. I'm sorry, sir. My answer was wrong. I meant that you're not handsome to me, but other, may, other women may think that you are. People like different things. Anyway, faces do not matter. Hmm. Just try to kind of... Um, 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 explain or justify herself or try to... Um, uh, not vex him um, with her blunt reply. Um, well, you're not pretty either. Well, he's having, he's uh, avenging, um, taking revenge on her. <laughs> well, you're not, uh, you're not pretty either, he replied, but he was still smiling. Maybe it was the wine that he was drinking that was making him so playful. Then he continued, young lady, I wanted to talk to someone tonight, so I sent for you. The fire and pilot cannot talk. Adele can speak a little, but not enough to interest me. It's the same for Mrs. Fairfax. I can have a good conversation with you, however, so please talk to me. And our evening, our evenings continued this way. Often, he asked me to have tea with him. He seemed interested in me and what I thought about life. My serious answers often made him smile. One night, I was lying in bed and thinking about him. Why doesn't he stay at the house very much? I thought. Usually, he only stays for a fortnight, but he has been here for eight weeks now. Will he leave again soon? At last, I went to sleep. A few hours later, I woke because of the sound of a terrible laugh from outside my door. I took my candle and immediately hurried into the corridor. Who's there? I shouted. And then I suddenly saw the door to Mr. Rochester's bedroom was open. At the same time, I smelled smoke. I ran inside to see that to see tall flames dancing around his bed while he slept the curtains were on fire hmm wake up wake up i shouted and i started shaking his shoulders but he did not move i ran back to my room and picked up a large jug of water that was next to my bed. I then ran back and threw it over him and the curtains. He immediately jumped from the bed while the flames got smaller and finally died. Hmm. So you can see here, Jane helping Mr. Rochester uh, um, putting down, oh, not putting down, but trying to, to stop the flames. What's happening? He shouted. Is that Jane Eyre? What are you doing here? There has been a fire, I shouted. Someone has set fire to your bed. Then I told him about the strange laugh in the corridor. He looked worriedly at the back, at the black bed and curtains. Then he said, wait for me here. Don't tell anyone about this. He went out of the room and I heard him go upstairs to the, to the rooms above. A few minutes later, he came back with an angry face. It's what I thought, he said. 
What is, sir? He did not reply, but stood looking at the ground. Then he said, That laugh you heard was Grace Poole. Please, please don't tell anyone about tonight, Jane. Now go to your room. I will sleep on the couch in the library. Good night then, sir. He looked surprised. What? You would just go and not say anything more? Suddenly he took both my hands in his. You have just saved my life. Jane, I cannot say any more. It was good that I was awake, I replied. Then I took my hands from his and left him. But I did not sleep again that night. Hmm. And that's the end of chapter five and the end of this first week of the live reading of Jane Eyre. And um, yes, yeah, so as you can see, for the first uh, with the first month uh, at uh, Thornfield Hall, there are quite a lot happening. And uh, I would love to hear what are your thoughts on the character on the characters and um how um and how much you understand from what <laughs> from what um i've been reading kitty is saying i like this chapter huh interesting um i would love to uh, know more about uh what you think about this chapter kitty so you'll be able to um to tell me more about what you what um, you liked about this chapter tomorrow when we will discuss um in uh, the live workshop and i hope that uh, you'll be able to attend those live workshop too and share your thoughts on uh, the novel because it doesn't mean that um, because it's not because you are not speaking English fluently or that you um, are not studying English literature that you are not able to share your thoughts on um, a classic of English literature or just your thoughts on um, literature and uh, books in general I think that the more you will allow yourself to speak in English and just share your opinion, what you think, and exchange ideas with other listening to other people, uh, other people's um, thoughts and views on the novel and the chapters, um, the more you will um learn uh from others and change your perceptions on things um at least this is what i um i witness when i uh speak to uh, when i have uh i host my uh, book clubs um sessions uh is the is how um my members and change their views and how, how it made how it makes it makes them think uh differently and uh, improve as well their um their level of english but also their critical thinking skills as well uh, how they develop those those thinking skills so yeah it's not just about um speaking in English it's about sharing your thoughts and your views um, and how sometimes you can relate those feelings and emotions about a character to your own experience or to someone else's experience uh, through literature yeah so I just wanted to share this uh, little thoughts on the on the topic and um yes i hope you enjoyed this live reading and um make sure that you comment uh in uh, the below the video or in 
on uh, the Spotify uh, rev or review the podcast. Um, and uh, I hope to see you soon in the book club. Uh, so just to remind you, the first session is tomorrow morning. And uh, I hope that you'll be able to make it to the sessions. And um, as I was also explaining um, before, um, those, if you're not able to become a member, then uh, those three live workshops will be, will be available later on as um, on replay, let's say and uh, but more like a one-off uh, purchase and you'll be able to watch the sessions and have sort of a little insight of what it's like to be part of Lydia's book club yeah <laughs> so that's it for me tonight I hope that um, you had a lovely time here and uh, I will see you on Monday for the live reading of chapter six. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.